success, made a lot of money, but th this is this this complete it. I, you know, we've been fortunate to, um, to to win all the marquee races and, and now championships. So it's definitely something that you know you, you you put on your your checklist as far as things to do. And the championship is always the one that that has eluded us throughout throughout my career. And, and to be able to to have a year and put the end of the year together like like we were this year is something that um, obviously kind of puts an excla exclamation point on it. So um, just fortunate to to be in this position and, and have been able to accomplish the things that we have and, and uh, sometimes you have to step back and say wow you know you don't you don't even it's really all about next week and what we do and, and sometimes you lose track of the things that that you've done and the things that you've been able to uh, accomplish and, and be a part of and, and achieve with with um, you know just a lot of people um, you know as, as as we've gone through these couple weeks you know you've a lot of that has come to the forefront and, and you've heard a lot more things and, and you sit back and you say wow it's been uh, it's been a pretty good journey, so it's been it's been fun, and obviously this is this is what we race for, and and work work my whole life to, to get to this point. So um, when you can live out your childhood dream and accomplish it, it's something that, that a lot of people aren't aren't fortunate to do, and uh, just feel really lucky to be in this spot. So what do you do with your downtime between now and that whopping you know long vacation <laughs> in February? I mean, what do you do? I mean, look. Look, maybe the team look forward to next year. Do you get time to actually breathe? You know, I think as you, as you look at our sport, there really is no downtime. We'll get the you know the, the couple days before Christmas um, up until New Year's, and then you're right back at you know what we do. And next week we go home, and you have photo shoots and production days that were already on the on the calendar. And um, you know, for for me, I'm, we've always been fairly organized because you try to accomplish and, and do as many things as you can to. Um, you know, to, to stay sane, I guess, would be a great way to put it. You have to be organized. So um, for, for us, we just try to take those few weeks. And the good news is you get to do all those things. You stay pretty busy, but you get to sleep in your own bed. How did the idea to make this a surprise for the kids come about? Um, they asked me what I wanted to do, and, and I just thought it would be a great way to, um, you know, to, to show the kids that you can, you can come from, from anywhere and, and be able to accomplish what you want to do. And... You, you know, when you when you look at at where the school is and, and all the things that they're they're putting into the school with the, the remodel and the sports teams and, and uh, all the things that are happening around here, there's just a there's a good vibe with the school, and I think that that's what these kids deserve on a on a yearly basis is to uh, to be able to have the opportunity to do this. And you know, I was fortunate to to be able to be in a position to where I had a lot of support and, and um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of influence on what it, not not from me. I'm just I'm just going to show up and, and participate in, in what they had already had planned. But when you look at whether it's the teachers, the counselors, um, you know, your sports coaches, I still talk to both of my, my wrestling coaches from, from high school. And those, 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 those people have a lot of influence on these kids. And, and um, you know, there's a lot of kids that, that have, you know, some, some things going on at home that they probably don't understand or don't like. And, and school needs to be a place that they want to go. And... You know, for for me, I'm fortunate to be able to uh, to draw some attention to them to hopefully push them in a positive direction. Why is it so important to keep these relationships nurtured back in <coughs> Bakersfield? Well, I think for for me, it's you know I still have a lot of friends and and and, and family that that live here, and and I feel like you know as you, as you look at the school, um, when we first started participating in things, probably 2005, 2006, somewhere right in that seven or maybe 2007. Um, you know, I just felt like it was it was kind of in a rut, and I felt like, you know, that, that if we could come here and be a part of things and just draw a little bit of attention to it and, and help with um, whatever, um, you could you could make an impact. And I think as a as a sports figure, uh, you look at a lot of things. There's there's a lot of guys that make a positive impact, and there's a lot of more more so that don't. And I think as as you come back, it's important to uh, to remember where you came from, and and it's fun. Uh, all in the same sense, to to be able to to come back and and uh, do things that that are kind of out of the box. And I think for for me, um, you know, a lot of the people that I went to school with work in the school system. Um, you know, my mom and my sister still work in the school system. And then you have a lot of the a lot of the kids and and, and families that that you went to school with now work in in the schools. So it's um, it's not. I guess it's not a responsibility, but you still have the opportunity to, to do things that, that uh, can help. Mm -hmm. Did you always daydream maybe about coming back as a champion at a pep rally, maybe when you were a student here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to walk 
in or now we're going to... No, I don't know that I ever had that vision. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was thinking about, you know, the first time I walked into the gym, and I think the first time I walked into the, to, to the gym was actually during a, a summer league uh, basketball camp that the, that the basketball team was having. And I'll never forget it. I walked in and I'm like, yeah, I'm way too short to play basketball. So I, I, I think I, went to, I, w I participated in the camp for one day. I, I figured I needed to find something else to do. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they look at you as a kid who used to come to this school? Because it has been a while and these kids are under 18. So do you think that that's how they look at you? Do you get that sense? I don't know that no, half of them know who I am. Right. So, but that's okay. You know, I, I think that in the end, it doesn't matter whether they, whether they know who I am or not. In the end, they need to know that where they sit right now, they can achieve what they want to achieve in life. And, and they don't have to, you know, whether they have a good home life or a bad home life, they don't have to just do what everybody else has always done in their family or around them. They can, they can do what they want to do. And they can, they can change the paths of their life and, and do what they dream about and, and, and achieve those goals. So. Uh, in the end, it's the message. It's not the person. It's it's the message that's delivered more than anything. Tim, can you take us back to your early days in racing at Mason Lynn, going against guys like Corelli and Sedgwick and Ron Hornaday, who you had a chance to employ at one point? Can you take us back to what that was like racing a Saturday night, Friday night, short track, small town like Bakersfield. Everybody knows everybody, and, and kind of how it connects to where you got to. Well, I'm still well connected, obviously, with with Hornaday and and Corelli, and and um, you know, obviously, Rick just turned 60. So uh, I grew up as a kid um, watching those guys race, and I and I do make sure that they remember that that they are old enough to be my dad. Um, so, you know, I think um, you know, for for me, it, when I first started going to Mesa Marin, it was we'd show up and it'd be my grandpa and my uncle, and we'd sit there and watch the races all night. So. Um, Is that any of you guys? Yeah. <laughs> one, we'll go one more question. Yeah. Yeah. Anything coming up with the Harvest Foundation for North? I mean, you did, you did the, uh, uh, the wrestling gym you know, refurbish that. You got anything else in the pipeline? Well, right now, um, the last project that we did was with the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation. They did a lot of things uh, with the baseball team and, and gloves and uniforms and, and equipment, um, you know, for those guys. And uh, we had to kind of take a, a year and take a breather. Last, I think it was last year that we did the, the foundation event, and I think we bought uh, uh, 22 sets of golf clubs for the golf team. So it's, um, it's kind of a yearly thing, and, and this year we haven't really had time to, to, to do that, and it's kind of been a transition phase, but we'll have the uh, event back uh, uh, next year as, as, as we come back.